Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer and today we're doing a tutorial but it's also Piao. So Piao! Piao stands for Premier Yarn of the Week but we're also doing a good deed today. So this is a tutorial. It is featuring so, uh, several different yarns because we're using the yarns for the tutorial and I'm giving you guys options to mix and or match these yarns. And the blanket is a tutorial to show you how to make the stitch and the blanket itself. This is going to be the Boggy Creek Blanket. I'll explain everything in just a moment. Um, we are not going to have a finished blanket by the time this tutorial is done. We are going to do a crochet along. So this is going to be a crochet along and I'm challenging everyone that is watching this video to make this blanket with me and try to donate it to Nancy at She's Got Yarn 2 because she is raising... Well, she's not raising... She's not raising anything. She's collecting blankets for a very good cause, Boggy Creek. Boggy Creek is a... Um, and Nancy talks way more about this. She's way more educated on Boggy Creek than I am. I've done a little bit of research, but from what I've gathered by watching her videos and looking at their website, Boggy Creek is a camp that is for children with disabilities, with ailments, with chronic disease, all these things, because they deserve to have a camp. They deserve to have a good time and have fun, even though they're dealing with these really hard things in their life. And they go and there's medical staff there to make sure that all their needs are met, that their medications are given to them, that they're taken care of. There's doctors, there's nurses, there's people there constantly that make sure the place is set up for all kinds of disabilities, all kinds of ailments. It's so the kids can come and they, they also will have different groups at different times throughout the year. So maybe they'll have a camp of kids that suffer from breathing issues and they'll have them all there at the same time or kids with certain types of cancers are there at one time or they they try to group kids together that kind of have similar issues or stuff like that now like i said i'm not an expert on any of this this is me trying to remember information and i may be wrong on some of it but like this is what i remember i wanted to make a blanket last year and i never took the time to make a blanket and i've been watching nancy do this for this is her second year i've watched and she's been doing it and she made she made such a huge contribution last year she's busting her butt she's making blankets but she's also organizing the whole thing with some other podcasters to get the blankets together and nancy's mom as well has been part of this they get together they make the donations for the blankets they actually took the blankets to the camp last year she has a video on that i will try to find it and link that below so you can see more detail um the camp is a really cool idea and the kids get to take home they get a special blanket on their bed the blanket has to be measurement the measurements between 30 and 40 inches by 40 to 50 inches so i am keeping that in mind for our tutorial this is slightly over 30 inches and it's gonna have a border on it this is the start of the blanket that we're making <laughs> i'm so excited i just filmed the tutorial section of this but these colors, I actually might cry. It's making me so happy. So the the information on how to make this blanket is going to be in the tutorial. It's a two row repeat. You start off with a single, or not a single, a foundationless single crochet row, which is really easy. I'll show you how to do that. And then it's a two row repeat. It's a shell row and a half double crochet row. And you just repeat that. And every two rows... I changed the color. So we have a shell row and a half double crochet, shell row, half double crochet. This is a shell row, which will be followed by half double crochet, and then we'll change back to the colors. Now what yarn we're using, the reason I picked this yarn is because I had enough of it to make a blanket. I also, it's a, it's a thick yarn, so it works up quickly. So you could probably, if you worked really hard, make this blanket in less than two weeks. I probably will be able to finish this blanket in a week, just because I tend to just sit and concentrate on something until it's done. <laughs> um, the yarn that I am using is Serenity Chunky, which, by the way, they have bags of three of these on Premier's website, three for ten. I will link them below. Um, uh, you're going to need six solid colors, and you're going to need six variegated. Okay, now the variegated, you have several options. The Serenity comes in lots of different colors. Um, let me just double check because I already have this all pulled up on my phone. 
the serenity serenity the three for ten where's the three for ten comes in all these colors so you have options for your solid color <laughs> you have lots of options you don't have to use the teal which is what I'm using you can make a, a I mean they have reds greens yellow they have all the colors and then the secondary yarn that I'm using is the serenity chunky candy because this is fun it's colorful this is not three for ten however another option you have three for ten is the tweed yarn and the tweed yarn is also a bag of three for ten and this is the color Aaron so it's like an off-white with rainbow speckles but this also comes in how many colors do they have one two three four five six twelve thirteen different colors just get an alternating color so if you're doing like a dark solid color do like the white with the speckles or the pink with the speckles find something that matches I highly suggest the candy because the candy is so much fun the candy is $3.99 a ball so it's not much more expensive and this is the color confetti I have lots of different colors and I think I have three of this but I need I need six of the solid and six of the variegated for this blanket but I think it's not going to all be this confetti color. I think it's going to be mixed with different colors. But another yarn that also matches up that goes perfectly with the Serenity is the Canyon colors. And this is a new yarn. And it is an exact match for the Serenity Chunky. <laughs> I know because I've made hats. Okay. They go together. They are perfect together. Um, and this is more of a gentle. It's not so strong variegated like the Candy Shop which I think is perfect for little kids, but it's more of a gentle variegated, but it still will be absolutely beautiful together. So those are the yarns we're using. You need six solid and six variegated. This is a crochet along, uh, so I'm estimating six and six. Um, I don't think it will be more than that. I think that will make the perfect size blanket because these blankets are not very big. They're going to be 35 by 45, I think, is what we're going to end up with at the end of the tutorial. Um, I did say this in the tutorial because I, I'm working on this with you guys. I don't know how many rows it's going to take to get to the 45 inches. We're stopping at 45 inches because I also need a border put on here. And the border, border is going to be up to you. I'm not filming the border. It's part of the tutorial. But I think I'm just going to do a half double crochet border all the way around. And I think I'm just going to do it with the blue. But the border has to be done because we're carrying our yarn along the sides and there's going to be these little pieces that are being carried. And you don't want like any of the medical equipment or anything to snag on those. So I am doing a half double crochet border around, but you can do whatever border you want that you think is fun. But I am so excited about this. <laughs> I am so excited about this. So like I said, what I'm using is the Serenity Chunky in the color teal and the serenity chunky and confetti but i think i'm also going to make some of the other candy ones they're all like this they're just different colors and several of them actually let me hang on because i have other colors this one will also go with the teal and this is the color raindrops and then this one is the color sprinkles so this would look really good with like pink or purple or even green as the solid i mean i don't even think it would look terrible with the teal and then this one is primary and you pretty much mix any color with the primary and then i don't remember the color name for this one because i don't have the label because i caked it up Hang on, let me check. All right, this one is the color Wildflower. And again, it goes with the teal. <laughs> you don't have to use the teal, but those are some options for you. Um, I also have Serenity Chunky in like a pink color, which would match with that, just to give you guys some ideas for your blanket. 
but because I only have three of this color, I think I'm going to mix all of the colors in. I think I'm just going to mix it in. And everything stays connected. We're, everything's staying connected as we, we're going to carry our yarn all the way up. And uh, so there's less ends to weave in. It's a super simple blanket. It's super fun. It's super cute and colorful. And I really do hope that you guys will join me in this crochet along and make this blanket and send it to Nancy. And um, yeah, if you do all the yarns I mentioned in this video are linked below. They are affiliate links. You don't have to click the affiliate link if you feel weird about that, but like it does help the channel. And um, I really do hope that you guys see it in your heart to make blankets with me. Even if you just make one, it does make you're making a difference in the life of a child who is dealt a hand that is very difficult. I cannot I cannot imagine my child has ADHD and he has some other issues, but I cannot imagine having a terminally ill child or dealing with cancer or leukemia or any of those kinds of things. So for me, like I'm doing this as much for the parents as I am for the children because I talk more about that in the tutorial <laughs> and if I continue talking I'm gonna cry because I'm I can't imagine so stay tuned the tutorial for the boggy creek blanket is next and uh anyone who participates in this I absolutely appreciate you and I know Nancy appreciates you and um Nancy is going to do this along with me. She has already <laughs> let me know that uh, if I put the tutorial out, she's going to make the blanket. And I'm positive she has enough of some of these yards to make the blanket. So get on it, girl. And um, stay tuned for the tutorial. All right, so to get started, some of the, the yarns that we're going to be able to make this blanket out of is the Serenity line or also the Canyon Colors. Which, if you ask me, the Canyon Colors is the same exact yarn. Just saying. I have mixed the Serenity with the Canyon Colors. They are a perfect match. So some of the options for the Serenity is the Serenity Candy, which is more of a newer yarn. And this is very, very fun. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a solid and a variegated. So you can go like really variegated. You can go more of a, a muted variegated or you can mix it up with like a different color altogether with these fun little spots. Now the solids and the Serenity Chunky Tweeds with the fun colors like this, these are on Premier's website, a bag of three for $10. So this is going to give you the best bang for your buck for making a, a blanket of this size for as least amount as possible but I also have some of this fun serenity candy so I kind of want to put some of this in the blanket as well but the candy colors is brand new and that would work as well so like you just you're gonna need a solid and you're gonna need one of these variegated to go with it whatever you want I just thought this would be so fun for the kids I think they're really gonna enjoy that so I'm gonna do the teal and the color confetti in the serenity chunky candy but I also really like this one, and I'm like, that would be really cute as well. So, I'm still debating. I may, because I have three of these as well, I may do like a section with the fun and a section with a little bit less. We're going to play that out, because I, I, like I said, we haven't started the blanket yet. I don't think I said that yet, but I haven't started the blanket yet. We're going to work on this together. Um, we're going to do this crochet along style. This is not going to be a finished blanket by the end of this tutorial. You will see it at the... No, you won't see it at the beginning because I'm releasing it tomorrow. You're not going to see this blanket until it's finished. So this is going to be kind of like a make-along, and we're going to do this together. So I'm not sure exactly how many balls that you're going to need of each, but I'm going to say for this size blanket to be, to be safe, you're probably going to need six balls of the solid and six balls of the variegated. I just double-checked my math. Yeah, 60, six, not 60. So the blanket is going to be between 30 to 40 inches by 40 to 50 inches. So it can be 30 by 40, it could be 35 by 45, it could be 40 by 50. Anywhere in those, those, um, those sizes will work. I am using what is a 7 millimeter crochet hook. I don't have an 8 millimeter. I mean, I have this one. But this one actually is much smaller than a 7mm, and they both say they're an L hook. So we're using an L hook, or this is a 7mm furls hook. Um, I may actually switch this out to my Omi hook just because I kind of like that better. Now, to get started, I'm going to start with the solid yarn. 
So this is the color teal from um, the Serenity Chunky in the color teal. And while these are no longer available, I have a large one, so I'm doing a swap out so I don't have to change. They don't make these big balls anymore, but this is the same. It's the color teal. The These big ones are the equivalent of three balls. So that's why I said you're going to need six. I got a big old giant yarn barf. Lovely. So we're going to work these, and we're not going to cut the yarn and disconnect the yarn, but we're going to do, like, um, striping. So we're just going to keep everything all connected all the time <laughs> okay we're gonna do two rows well to start we're gonna do three rows of the blue we're gonna do the chain well we're not even doing a chain row we're doing a foundationless single crochet row wow this is the downside of using big balls sometimes is this is always a problem we're gonna do a foundationless single crochet row in a multiple of three now if you don't have this yarn and you want to use other yarns that you already have a lot of you can use that you just need to do a foundationless single crochet in the multiple of three so it needs to be divisible equally by three and you need it to be between 40 30 and 40 inches to start okay so i will try to write my notes in the description box so we're going to start with is a slip knot. Make your slip knot any way you want, but this is the way I make mine. And then we're going to do a foundationless single crochet. And I'm not sure on my number yet because I made this blanket originally in a smaller yarn. So we're going to figure out together what the foundationless single crochet is. The count. I, I think, I don't know. I don't know yet. No, we'll figure it out. Okay. To do a foundationless single crochet, you chain three. One, two three and you go back into the first chain and you pull up a loop then you chain one that acts as the chain because what we're creating is a chain row and a single crochet row at the same time so you chain one so you should have two on here and then you pull through both of them that counts as your single crochet All right now we're going to go back into that chain we created see there's two two loops on the bottom here you're going to pull through, chain one, and then single crochet. Okay, I'll show you again. You go through the bottom section down here, and if you got to pull your stitches apart, you can. Because there should be three loops down here at the bottom. You want to go through the bottom two, like that. Pull up a loop, chain one, and then single crochet that is how you make a foundationless single crochet it's not hard it's just something that you're gonna have to get used to this hook feels really squeaky and it is driving me crazy hang on rub it on my pants and see if we can fix that it's a brand new hook i've never used it before this was gifted to me a couple months ago from ricola's crochet corner and i haven't used it yet it is very very squeaky But the camera is a little bit further away from my hands. I actually just zoomed in, so we shouldn't hear it too incredibly too bad. So foundationless single crochet until you reach about 30 inches and make sure it's a multiple of three. So if you need to go one, I did that wrong. So if you need to, while you're making these, go one, two, three, one, two, three, like you're dancing. Just to make sure it's a multiple of three, you can do that. So that was one, two, three, one, two, three, and just keep doing that. And then measure it. And I will give you an exact count when I get to the end of this row when I figure that out. As long as it's in that sweet spot between 30 and 40 inches, it will be just fine. I 
I thought about mounting a uh, ruler permanently to my table as often as I need one. And I know that I have a tape measure in the living room because I had to measure little man's feet yesterday. That boy's got some big feet. He's only nine years old. His feet are like a half an inch smaller than mine. Because I didn't know what size shoe to buy him. He's got big feet like his dad. His dad wears size 13. There's no way. Mr. Sentiment's got giant feet. Whoops. It is always when I'm doing a tutorial, I realize how quiet it is in my house. And I can literally hear the clock ticking. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's my uh, crochet clock. It looks like that's about a foot. So we're about a third of the way there. I have no idea how many stitches I've created. We'll figure that out when we get to the end. We just want to make sure that we have three, or a multiple of three. Now if you're gonna chain this out you can absolutely chain this out if you don't want to do the foundation single crochet. You hate the foundation single crochet or you just can't figure out how to do it. You can chain whatever number this is. Chain till it's about 30 inches. Not a big deal. People will leave me alone. <laughs> my phone, I swear, all day long. My niece has called, video chatted me twice today. Mr. Cinnamon has texted me about 45 times. And that text right there was from somebody I have kind of been avoiding. I don't want to talk to her. She's an old friend that I have nothing in common with anymore. She's one of those people that like only call when they need something or want something and don't really care about you. And I just don't have space for that right now. That's frustrating to me. And I don't want to hurt her, but you know. So the reason we're doing Boggy Creek Blankets, in case I didn't cover this in the intro because I haven't recorded it yet, I don't know. Um, my friend Nancy, she's got yarn too, does this because her mom has done it and um, she's doing it with a couple other podcasters as well. And they make blankets and they collect blankets and they deliver the blankets to Boggy Creek. Now Boggy Creek is a camp for children with illnesses chronic illness, um, severe illnesses. They create a safe environment with doctors and everything for these children so these children can have an amazing experience because they wouldn't otherwise be able to go to camp or have that kind of experience. They have doctors and nurses on hand at the camp all the time. It's a lot of volunteer work and the kids get to go home with this blanket. So this blanket gets matched up with a bear that is sewed it is hand sewed and the fat pattern is free on the boggy creek website in case you're an expert sewist which i am absolutely not and they said that the pattern is a difficult pattern so that not everyone can actually make the boggy bears but you know they give the kid a teddy bear and a blanket and the kid gets to take the teddy bear and the blanket home so for me i want a blanket that is made out of a yarn that I know is machine washable and dryable because those parents have enough to deal with. 
They have enough to deal with. I'm going to grab this and check the measurement without having to worry about washing instructions. So make sure that your yarn is machine washable and dryable. And the Serenity Chunky is machine washable and dryable. All right, I am at... Twenty-four inches. Just gonna leave that out. Keep going. And um, you want it to be soft. You want the the blanket to be soft. You want it to be made out of the good yarn. You know, Serenity Chunky is soft. It's squishy. It works up quickly. It's a good price. If you bought this yarn, the Serenity Chunky is three ninety-nine a ball, or it's a three pack for ten. And, like I said, you only need six balls, so $20 for the yarn. And if you don't have the money to buy the yarn, if you don't want to make a blanket, you can also do a financial donation. They accept financial donations, and that help, helps take care of a lot of the cost for all of that stuff, because these kids get to go there for free. So I will link everything below. Oops. So you have the information. I think I'm going to aim for 35 inches with this blanket. Just so that we're in that sweet spot. And we are going to put a very small border on here. So don't go up to 40 inches at this point. Go to 35 at the most. Oh, look at that. This backdrop is exactly 30 inches. Now we know. As is my string. So let's count how many stitches we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. And I believe 75 is divisible by 3. 75 divided by 3 is 25, so that works. So chain of 75 will work. And actually, I'm going to do 75, 76, 77, 78. I'm going to do a chain of 78. 6, 7, 8. All right, so chain of foundationless single crochet. Foundationless single crochet 78. I'm writing the pattern down as we go along so I don't forget how to do this. All right, now. All right, we're at the end of the row. We chained one, and in that first stitch, we're going to put single crochet and two double crochets, all in that same stitch. All right, then we're going to skip the next two stitches, and in that third one, we're going to do the same thing single crochet two double crochets all in the same stitch skip two single crochet two double crochets oops two double crochets skip two stitches and in the third single and two doubles this is a very very ridiculously easy two row repeat skip two single crochet two doubles and it's something that is easy you don't really have to think about it skip two and then the third single crochet and two double crochets and it's it's fun for me because when you're mixing the two different yarns together so you're gonna have a solid and a variegated and to me, that makes it a lot easier than just doing one solid color of yarn all the way across. 
because that is where I run into problems where I get bored really easily. And because this is a thick yarn, it's going to work up fairly quickly. And it's going to be nice and squishy. And now Juju is texting me because that's just the way my life has been going today. <laughs> uh. So just all the way across, skip two and then the third, put those three stitches, the single crochet and the two double crochets. Now if you guys had made the hat, you will recognize this part of the stitch pattern because this was part of the stitch pattern, but the next row is going to be a little different than the hat. Skip two, and I'm talking about the blue Mesa hat tutorial. Single crochet and two double crochets all the way across. Skip two. Single, two doubles. That is what it should look like. And we're almost to the end of the row. We're like two-thirds of the way there. And like I said, you don't have to use the Serenity. You can use a thinner yarn if you want. You're just going to have to change the initial stitch count to go with whatever yarn you decide to use. Um, I was thinking this would be really cool if I did puzzle, but I don't think there's a solid colored yarn that matches up very well with the puzzle. Um, Premier Yarns does have a yarn called Rustic that goes with the puzzle, kind of, but it's a little bit thicker than the puzzle. So you would have spots of the blanket that were thicker and spots that were slightly thinner. Which, I mean, that, it, that would work. That would absolutely work. And the Rustic is a really soft, squishy yarn and goes well with the, um, the puzzle. So I was trying to think of yarns that would work up quickly, that are a decent price so that we could all work on this project together that has a colored or a solid and a variegated. And looking through my stash, this is what I came up with. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I really am thinking I'm going to mix the candy with the tweed because I have both. And I think that will be really cute. So I'm thinking I'm going to do sections where we have just the candy and then when we, it's time to switch out the candy we will put in the tweed. We're going to have to calculate that because we don't want a half a row to be candy and a half a row to be tweed. That will not be cute. And we can all make a blanket together and send it off to Nancy. So the two row repeat is going to be this row that I'm showing you where you skip two and you do the single crochet and the two double crochets in the same stitch. And apparently I missed a stitch so I'm just going to fudge that and it'll be fine. It will work out. <laughs> All right. And then in the very last stitch you're going to put a single crochet, which for me was two extra stitches. There was two stitches there, but it will work out. It will be fine. So I'm going to chain one and turn our work. This is what the back side looks like, nice and textury. And this side looks a little flatter. And in this row, we're just going to do half double crochets in every stitch. So we're not skipping any. We're just every single stitch. So right here in this first stitch, that chain one don't count as anything. It's just a turning chain. You're going to put a half double crochet in every one of those stitches across. So you should have the same amount of stitches because there's three stitches in each one of those chains. So you should have three half double crochets in each one of those clusters all the way across. This is the two row repeat, the cluster row and half double crochet row. And after we finish this half double crochet row, the next row we're going to do shells again, but we're going to do it with the candy yarn. So this, you know, got a little bit of a stripey effect happening. And we're going to keep the yarn attached at all times. We're not going to cut so there's not all those extra ends to weave in.
And you are going to repeat this. You should end in this tealy color or whatever your solid color row is so that the blanket is symmetrical. We are going to finish this after we reach 40 to 50 inches long. Let's err on the side of 45 inches so that because we are going to put a thin border on here. Just half double crochet. I like the Serenity Chunky yarn for this because, like I said, it comes in solid, it comes in variegated. The Canyon Colors pairs very well with it. It also comes in the cool Tweety one, and the Tweed one comes in different colors, and like, it's a good deal, the 3 for 10, for the, the Chunky Tweed and the Solid. The Candy is not 3 for 10, and the Canyon Colors is not 3 for 10, but they're not much more money. I want to say they're $3.99 a ball as well. They might be $4.99 a ball. So it's not in incredibly a lot more money. You can use whichever ones of these you want. I just thought that candy, it, this just screams little kid. It really does. It's fun. It's colorful. It literally is named candy. <laughs> and I'm trying to do boy colors or what I perceive as boy colors because I notice a lot of blankets that get donated are, are really feminine. And I thought this was more of a neuter, neutral gen, gender uh, words, gender neutral type thing, or it could be for a little boy if you know where it's not so pink or lacy or frilly, you know. Because I think a lot of the people that are donating are we're we're all women, you know. We tend to go with what we think is cute or pretty, and we don't think like, hey, little boys do. There is a murder of crows outside just squawking. I thought it was a little kid screaming. And crows are like constantly in this area. I don't think you can hear them over the wind chime, though the wind chime's pretty loud. My video yesterday, the window was open and the window, the wind chimes were going. And Mr. Cinema's like, somebody's going to complain about those wind chimes. And sure enough. <laughs> I just had to laugh. I was like, I knew it was coming. All right, so we got to that very first stitch, which is a single crochet of that shell. And we're going to stitch into that. Now we're going to add in the Serenity or whatever, whatever you is your variegated yarn. We're going to add that one in. These colors are so fun. All right, now you can connect these yarns whatever way you want. I'm just gonna take and do, I'm gonna slip stitch it that way. All right, and then I'm gonna crochet over the colored end. Leave this blue one dangling. Leave it connected, but leave it dangling. We're not gonna use it right now, but we're gonna keep it connected. And I'm gonna crochet over my tail here. All right, so we're gonna chain, so we already, we slip stitched in, but we're still gonna chain one, and then we're gonna put our single crochet. Every shell row is gonna start in a shell, so single crochet and two doubles. Look at how good that yellow looks against that teal. I'm loving it. Look at that. <laughs> All right, now we're back to the shell row. So this is easy, because we already did this, right? We can weave this in better later, so I'm just going to put it back to the back, but I wanted to lock it in by crocheting over it at least right there. You can weave it in better later because we're not going to have a bunch of tails, like that one tail is not going to bother us. Skip two and in the third put a shell. Single crochet, two doubles. This is going to be so fun. I'm so excited. All right, that yellow is so pretty. Skip two and the third put a shell, single and two doubles. And we're just going to keep repeating this. So we're going to do a single row and a half double row in the blue, uh, uh, not single, a shell row and a half double row in the blue. We're going to do a shell row and a half double row in the 
variegated and we're going to keep doing that. So we're going to have blue, variegated, blue, variegated, two rows. It's that easy. These colors are fun. Oh, I'm so glad I used this yarn. And I think if I mix the candy with the tweed, I will have enough yarn without having to order any. And I still think it will be cute and fun. And I think it will be a perfect donation blanket. Now, Nancy did say if I got this tutorial done soon, she was going to make this blanket. And I'm fairly confident she already has all the yarn she needs to make this blanket. Because <laughs> I know she likes the toy box yarn and the toy box yarn would work. And I know she likes Serenity and the Serenity will work. Look at these colors, okay? Tell me that's not fun for little kids. Or for big kids. Like, I would love this blanket for myself. Now, every row, because we started with 78, what did I say was divisible by 78? 26? Am I right? Yes. 78 divided by 3. So we should have 26 shells in every row. Now, my other blanket I was working on as a a um, uh, prototype for this blanket. I actually messed up and missed a whole shell. And so I have to frog that one back. Which is why you're not seeing that in this video because I still have to frog it back and I'm a little bit mad at it right now because I messed up. But just make sure you have the same amount of shells in every row. These, these colors are fun. They're so fun. trying to think when I was a little kid did I love color as much as I do now I don't remember I kind of feel like I did I know as a teenager I absolutely loved wild colors I had this one outfit that was every color of the rainbow and it was a t-shirt and short set that I got from Kmart and I loved it and it was literally looked like it was rainbow paint splattered all over it <laughs> it was it was probably tacky but oh I loved it I don't remember when I was a real little kid, but I can imagine little kids just like color. Make them feel cheerful, you know, even though they're going through some stuff. Like, this should be a good memory, the blanket, the camp. It should be a good time for them, even if they're really, really sick. I also thought about, and I know this is morbid and it's incredibly sad, but I thought about, like, what if that kid goes to camp? And then doesn't live much longer and the parents have that blanket like i want it to be made out of a yarn that they can hold on to because i can't imagine losing a child i cannot that's devastating to think of and i just want i'm thinking of something that would be happy memories not just for the kid but like for the parents just in case just in case and that's why i'm like the yarn has to be washable it has to be soft has to be something that will last you know and it's easy care that's why it took me so long to make this tutorial because I was really really thinking about what yarn would be best and my heart is absolutely going to be in this blanket So we're still doing the shells. We're going to do a couple rows together. And then, um, remember we got our two stitches. And then that very last one of the row, we're going to put our single crochet. And chain one and turn. It's so fun. It's so fun. This row is going to be half double crochet. So don't forget that very first stitch where you just made a single crochet. Put a half double. Put a half double in every stitch. All the way across. Your stitch count should always be the same as, you should have 78. You should have 78 half double crochets in this row. And you should have 26 shells in 
every other rule. This is just fun. This yarn is adorable. It reminds me of like a circus or a carnival, which also makes me think of another place that is in Florida as well, because Boggy Creek is in Florida. There is a place in Florida called Give Kids the World, and it's more along the lines of like a make-a-wish type situation, and they have housing on, and I did a video on my other channel on Give Kids the World, because they do a lot of fundraising, and they do, they had in the past a Christmas event where they had Christmas lights you can come look at. I don't think they do it anymore, but I'm not positive on that. That's another good organization that really just deals with children who have terminal illness or like cancers type stuff. And the kids and their families come and stay in these houses on their property for a week long vacation or trip. And on the property is um, rides that are handicap accessible. Uh, wheelchair accessible. They have an ice cream bar and a pool, all of which are um, accessible. And the place is just really, really cool. And it's another place kind of like Bo Camp Boggy Creek where they're doing something special for kids who are sick, who have illnesses that they didn't ask for but they have to live with. And this colorway reminds me of the Christmas lights or like the the theming behind some of the stuff that's at Make Kid, Give Kids World. It's a really cool organization. Isn't that fun? Isn't that just so cute? <laughs> I'm going to do one more teal roll, roll with you guys. And then I'm going to let you go about your business. This is just going to be a quick tutorial for today. Or a crochet along if you will. I'm not going to have the finished product in this in this video. I'm just going to have this little piece here. We're going to work on it together. I will show the progress as I finish the blanket up. And then um, I will try to get it to Nancy as soon as I can. But I really hope that you will participate. If you, have not, if you don't have a lot of other stuff going on. If you feel inclined and you feel it on your heart to make a blanket for Boggy Creek, I thought the best way for me to participate is to A, raise awareness by telling you about Boggy Creek, and B, having a crochet along to where we can make this blanket together and send one off. And even if you just make one, you're gonna, you're giving a gift to one person, like one kid, one family. And to me, that's a big deal. And I know there's a lot of people that are like, I'm gonna make 10 blankets and that's cool too, but like one is enough. One is still a big deal. If you could make one, I would be so honored if you used my pattern or if we did this together. You can use whatever pattern you want. Just make sure it's the right size. You know, it's, it's a, a yarn that is washable, dryable, soft and squishy. Not gonna irritate the kid's skins. I actually did mention this in another video. Because I have skin condition issues. My children both have eczema, which eczema is one of those things that can be affected by your immune system. Oh, there's a lot of, of issues that come with immune system deficiencies that can cause problems with your skin. A lot. And I don't want the blankets to be like itchy or scratchy. I want them to be scoffed and squishy because some of these kids might also be on the spectrum and they might have um, sensitivities to certain textures or feels like I do. Some of these kids are just sensitive to their skin because of the disease that they have. Some of them are sensitive with their skin because of the medications they're on can cause irritations and all kinds of problems. Just keep all of that in mind when you're making the blanket. That's why we picked this yarn. This is so pretty. It's so colorful and fun. I'm I'm loving it. All right, so we got to the neck. I didn't even tell you. I just did it. Okay, we got to the end of the row. I am going to slip stitch and bring in the blue that was connected two rows below. Oh, I need to be on camera better, right? Wow. We got to the end of the row. I'm going to pick up the blue, and I'm going to pull it through. Okay. That's going to just count as our chain one. And then we're going to put our single crochet in that last stitch there. And we're just going to let the color one kind of hang. Okay. And then remember, when we start the next row, 
It's kind of blurry. We're going to put a, a shell right in that first stitch. So single crochet and two half double crochets in that first stitch. I really need to put my glasses on. Just every other row, row every... We're going to do two rows, two rows, two rows, two rows back of the colored. And this is just the shell row, so we're going to skip two and put a shell. Single crochet, two double crochets. Now I think if you did the whole blanket in the Serenity candy like that, it would be just, it would be too much. And you're not going to see the stitches. That's why I really like the idea of doing it this way. And that's so stinking cute. I just really like this. I think it's going to be so much fun. And you see how fast this worked up? We've been, what, filming for 22 minutes and we already got, how many inches is this? Three and a half inches. We're working on three and a half inches. And it's only been 20 minutes, so. It's not bad at all. This blanket should be done in no time flat. So I will link the, the, the yarn that I'm using. Actually, I will link all of these options. I will link the Serenity Solid. And I will link it in the three pack because that's a better deal. I will link the Serenity Chunky Tweed. And I will link the three pack because, again, it's a better deal. And then I will link the Canyon Colors. And I will link the Candy. So that you guys have options. You can pick whatever options you want. Uh, those are affiliate links, but that's not why I'm posting it. It's just, I'm, that's not why I'm doing any of this. But if you are so inclined, I would really love to make a blanket with you guys. I would love to make a bunch of these and send them off to the kids. And just have you guys all participate. I just think it would be so much fun. If you already have Serenity Chunky, just go stash diving. You're going to need six balls. Three, in, or no, you're going to need 12 balls total. Six solid and six variegated. And you can do any combination of any of these yarns. They, it will work together. It's going to be beautiful. This is so much fun. It's so much fun. I'm, I cannot wait to see that. Look at how cute that is. You guys. <laughs> that candy is adorable. I fell in love with this candy when they released it, and now that I'm working it into this blanket, I'm like, yep, this is the perfect yarn. It is so gorgeous. I have other colors of the candy, too, and I, I don't know. Maybe I will just use just candy and do different colors of the candy, or maybe I will do the tweed. I don't know. We're just going to have to play it out and see, because I do have other colors of the candy. And I have... I don't have three more of, like, I have three of this colorway, but I don't have three more of the same colorway, but I think it doesn't matter. I think it's just going to be our candy blanket. I want candy. Do, 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 do. I'm going to finish up this row with you guys, and I'm going to end it here and then film the intro. Yeah, just continue. Two row repeat. Shell row, half double crochet row. Shell row, half double crochet row. And then when you get to the last section, when you get to where you're like at 45 inches, um, make sure that your last row is the blue because we started with the blue. Make sure your last row is half double crochets. And then do a single crochet on top of it because we did the foundation list here. So you want a single crochet is that very last row. And then put whatever border you want. And the reason we're going to need a border, and it could just be a half double crochet border. It could be a single crochet border is because we're going to have all these strings on the end. So we're going to have this string from carrying up and then we're going to have the next. So just do a quick border around the edge. You can do it in the solid, you can do it in the colored, you can do it in a different yarn entirely. Just put a nice little border on there. Whatever border you choose. Don't matter to me. And uh, 
that's going to be this that that's going to be it for this tutorial and as always like if you want to change it up you want to do something different i completely encourage that always you want to do a real fancy border do it you want to do a real simple border do it it's up to you but definitely this needs a border because those strings will get snagged on stuff we don't want like you know breathing tubes or anything to get caught up in the the strings down at the end or IVs or anything like that I'm really loving this it is so cute All right, Nancy, you're up. You gotta make a blanket now, babe. <laughs> and everyone who is watching this video, tag your it. You need to make this blanket or make a blanket for Boggy Creek. Let's do this together. Let's really bring this community together. And uh, let's create. And that's just beautiful. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna let you go. And um, I will write down whatever notes I have in the the description box below. You can copy that and write it down, or you can copy it and save it to your phone, like do a screenshot. And uh, that's going to be our blanket. So I will always update you guys on this channel if there's any changes to this pattern, or if I find something, like maybe I needed more yarn than what I thought. But right now, because we're starting, I'm estimating six balls of solid and six balls of variegated. I think that will be plenty. And, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope to see lots of these blankets. You can send me pictures. You can post in the Facebook group, tag me on Instagram. Uh, you can email me the photographs, or you can just send the blankets to Nancy, and she will show me. <laughs> this is the Boggy Creek Blankets, and uh, I will see you in the next one.